Williams Ecopedia, Arcology to Xeriscaping. This book is dedicated to all of the pioneers who have and still are working hard to lay the foundations for a sustainable future. With special thanks for all the pioneers from Arcosanti and Lost Valley. <clears throat> Williams Ecopedia, Volume 1, Topics in Sustainability from Arcology to Xeriscaping. Co-housing, page 29. Co-housing. I hope that I might bring my passion for beautiful experiences and the quest for original solutions to the search for fair and just environments. So says Paul William Moore, an architect practicing in Flagstaff since 1996, who is right now, as of the writing of this article, working on the designs for the first green housing development in the Flagstaff area. Moore's design for this development began as a project he called the Eco Housing Project which would combine sustainable and ecological construction with the principles of co-housing for economic and community development. The concept of co-housing began in Denmark in 1967 by 50 families who came together to create a neighborhood that better met their desires and needs than the current forms of city development they were seeing. The idea was then introduced to America by co-housing, colon, a contemporary approach to housing ourselves. Written by American architects Catherine McCammett and Charles Dureth. The hallmark feature of a co-housing development started by these 50 families in Denmark is that the members of the community design their community and neighborhood by a group decision process rather than it being defined for them by others who don't live there. Most co-housing developments include individual apartments, a central common house used by the whole neighborhood, and plenty of open green spaces for all to enjoy. Each home is self-sufficient, yet also has access to shared facilities, finding the balance between personal privacy and living amongst people who know and care about each other. Each resident has an input into the development and evolution of their neighborhood through, usually consensus, group decision-making. Many co-housing developments are motivated because of the greater safety and livelihood it provides for children. Co-housing projects tend to attract the type of people who care for a more just and lively life on the planet Earth through community development. This desire spills over from just economic and design concerns into environmental concerns, so most co-housing projects choose to develop along sustainable lines by using ecological design principles and green building as much as they can. Economically, most co-housing projects are either individually titled houses interspersed with common property owned by a homeowners association, individual condominiums within a single structure, or residents are the shareholders in a legal entity called a housing cooperative with allocations of residency and monetary decision-making determined by a set of bylaws. The individual condominium model is the most common because banks tend to lend more to individual owners than housing cooperatives. According to the website www.directory.cohousing.org backslash us underscore list backslash, there are over 80 co-housing communities currently in America, with plans for over 100 more in the works. I find that co-housing principles share many aspects with the idea of intentional communities, but also focus on more realistic and feasible issues of ownership and economics, combined with the shared principles and desire for an improved community life and a greater focus on consensus group decision making. Like many who choose architecture as a career, Moore has been interested in the field for as long as he can remember. He studied at North Dakota State University, where he developed his professional training, as well as an interest in integrating the built environment with the natural world through techniques such as passive solar design. A poster displayed at his school for the Arcosani project caught his attention and led him to taking time off to do an extended workshop to learn the design concepts of Paulo Soleri. Since that first workshop, Moore has returned to Arcosani a number of times for a year at a time. Even to this day, he and his dance troupe, Human Nature, put on annual performances at the Arcosanti site. Visit www.arcosanti.org for an event schedule. While at the Arcosanti project, Moore met some folks on a tour who were forming a project of their own near Tucson. From this chance meeting, Moore found himself eventually employed at a firm called Sarbid, S-A-R-B-I-D, as one of the architects of the Biosphere 2, participating on the site as the project arose from the desert. From his participation at Arcosanti and Biosphere 2, Moore has witnessed firsthand what can happen when there is a large-scale commitment to making an ideal or a concept physically happen, happen by pushing towards resolution. From his experience at Arcosani and learning the design theories of Paulo Soleri, Moore said he learned the potential for integrating the process of design and construction, balancing population density and natural open space, the positive communal aspects of extensive social space, 
and the potential for an inspired commitment to a positive future. Together, he and his cohort, Jeff Zucker, an architect in Prescott, saw the co-housing model as an excellent vehicle to take the concepts from Arcosanti into the real world. Together, they hosted a meeting that became the initial seed for the Manzanita Village of Prescott, an existing and growing co-housing neighborhood. Visit www.manzanitavillage.com for more information. Arcology, biospherics, and co-housing are the ABCs, so to speak, of Moore's history in sustainable architecture. All of this history has led to the opportunity for Moore to be hired to participate in the planning and, develop and designing of the Rio Homes development off Pine Knoll Drive in Flagstaff. This development uses new urbanist principles such as higher density combined with more open space, garages off back alleys, and front doors oriented to a pedestrian green space. Early on in the design process, Moore approached the developer, Tom Brewster of AZ North Development, about doing something different on an odd-shaped five-acre portion of the site on the other side of Pine Knoll Drive. Tom Brewster, with positive input from the city of Flagstaff, gave more the support to integrate co-housing and sustainability into this portion of the larger project. A group of potential homeowners gathered together to participate in the design process. After a year of hard work and fighting rising home prices, the co-housing portion of the concept became unfeasible. However, the design aspects remain, including the site plan with two clusters of 10 homes around two courtyards and a substantial green space at the heart. The lots will be oriented so that all homes designed for passive solar will have access to the sun, making them warmer in winter, cooler in summer, with lower utility bills and more comfort. One of the unique features of the project is that the garages will be clustered together separate from the homes. This allows for more connection to open space and safe places for kids to play. The project also has a commitment to energy efficiency with quality installation and energy efficient heating equipment. As drawings and specifications develop, Moore and his design associate, Shelley Hall, will be weighing the intentions of keeping the home prices competitive and achieving a product that is healthy, beautiful, and functional. Currently, they are working on developing a green material palette for the designs, using such materials as recycled lumber, non-toxic insulations, and perhaps bamboo tiles for flooring. At the rate that Flagstaff is being developed, 20 homes on 5 acres may seem to be only a drop in the bucket. However, if we don't want to Phoenix flag, this is a very important drop. These homes will be models to show the general home purchasing public what what sustainability can look like and what it can do financially and personally for the homeowner. Consumer and public response to these homes will be an important indicator to developers for how important and how marketable sustainable developments are. Hopefully the project will be able to re-inject the concepts of community and social space so that people can see how much interactive community life is better than a life of neighborhood isolation caused by current development patterns. If you have further interest in this project or in co-housing, you can email Paul William Moore, pwmarchitect at infomagic.net. Every step forward is progress, and thanks to the work of people like Paul Moore, we are on the road. There's still a long way to go, and it is going to take more than one dedicated visionary architect to get there. It's going to take all of us with large-scale commitment to making an ideal or a concept physically happening by pushing towards resolution. Let architects sing of aesthetics that bring rich clients and hordes to their knees. Just give me a home in a great circle dome where stresses and strains are at ease. R. Buckminster Fuller.